to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 259. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. And this is a podcast primarily about knitting, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from. And I live with my husband, Dennis, and our adorable cat, Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. And yes, this is the first episode of 2018. So happy new year, everybody. I hope you all had a wonderful, happy New Year's Eve and day and got lots of making done over the holiday break. I know I did, so uh, yeah, I'm excited to share those projects with you uh, throughout the episode and talk more about that in Blather, the segment at the end of the episode. However, just to give you a quick recap of what Dennis and I did uh, New Year's Eve slash day, uh, we had honestly, we planned to just kind of be low key on uh, New Year's Eve's, you know, hang out at home, ring the New Year on telly like you do. But uh, turns out uh, one of our friends decided to host a last minute New Year's Eve party. So he lives in the neighborhood. So we hopped on over there, got together with a group of friends and had some wine, cheese, champagne, and he's actually a DJ. So, you know, he was kind of spinning the whole night. It was, it was a lot of fun, I have to say. So uh, we did not get home until about 3 a.m. in the morning, which is crazy sauce because I will be totally honest, I can't do that anymore. I'm not, <laughs> I remember the days when I used to go out partying a lot and I would come home at the crack of dawn. Not that person anymore. I can't, I don't know what happened to her, but I'm in bed usually around 11 p.m., 11.30 at the latest. Um, yeah, it's a sign of the times, guys. I'm getting old. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's, that's neither here nor there, but you know, thumbs the bricks. So, uh, but yeah, we had a really awesome uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, New Year's Day was kind of shot pretty much because we were so exhausted and just hung out at home and I, I sewed, I sewed basically and, and knit and it was, it was lovely. So before I get into what I've been making this week, we have a couple of winners to announce. Uh, first of all, for the Half Moon Oracle Shawl Cal and also for the Box of Socks 2017 Cal. Uh, so, I didn't talk about prizes because I'm, I will be totally honest, I'm horrible at planning prizes and talking about them on the podcast, but you guys, I have some fun prizes to award the winners for these giveaways. And you know, everyone who joined in on the Cal is a winner in my opinion, but you know, I can't make prizes for everybody. So random number generator it is, but um, okay. So let's talk about the winner for the Half Moon Oracle Shawl, which is a pattern design that I designed and it was just so awesome to see all of the different colorway combinations that you guys were coming up with and just a huge thank you to everybody who purchased the pattern for me and had so much fun knitting it and I just got such great feedback uh, from those of you who knit it and it just you know it means so much so uh, what better way to thank you than to do a giveaway and the prize that I'm awarding to the winner of this knit along is a skein of my hand dyed yarns volume vine yarns in a colorway and base of your choosing and the winner of the Half Moon Oracle Shawl Cal is, da -da -da -da, drum roll, <laughs> that was a really bad drum roll. Anyway, the winner is number 10, the New England gal. So yay, congrats. Uh, she knit a beautiful shawl uh, using neon greens, blacks, and grays. Grello, girl, after my own heart. So congrats, New England gal. Uh, please get in touch with me uh, via Ravelry, letting me know in the subject line that you are the winner. And uh, let me know your shipping info and what colorway you would like me to dye you and which, which Skein. Let me know your info and I will whip your prize up for you ASAP. And yes, now down to the box of socks because I know you guys have been waiting a whole year for this. <laughs> so, and you know, I have to say there were so many awesome boxes of socks. And what really struck me is that so many of you put so much effort into your boxes of socks. And I really enjoyed seeing uh, all the different variations and the boxes that you were choosing and it was just so cool. And I'm just so amazed how many of you are excited for this knit along. Uh, so much that, yeah, I'm just gonna keep continue doing it every year. And I could not help, because I could only choose two winners, uh, I could not help creating a little montage of some of my favorites, that boxes that really stuck out to me. Uh, because yeah, there were so many that I just got a feeling that you had put so much time and effort and, and you had so much pride for your boxes of socks. And, I just wanted to put together this little collage of um, beautiful boxes that I think deserve deserve their little moment on the podcast. <laughs> um, 
so i hope you know i will put that here and you can enjoy for yourself but um yeah i i think it's time for me to announce two winners but first let's talk about the prize uh i was browsing fabric.com like i usually do and i was looking for you know just fabric for dresses that i sew and this i, I stumbled upon this one uh print that i was just like that would make the perfect prize for the box of socks so i made two but you guys I made some project bags for the winners and so it's this really fun cotton and steel sock print fabric with a contrasting chambray for the base. It's not as sturdy as canvas I want to say but it, I just think you know if you are knitting socks and you just want to chuck it in your bag it you know folds up really nicely and it, and it still stands up on its own relatively well um, but you know for the most part it's a very soft um, bag that you can just chuck in your bag on the go. Um, and then it's also lined with this really awesome metallic red lining fabric, um, you know. So I thought it was a really fun giveaway prize. And uh, yeah, so let's get to the winners. And okay, guys, are you ready for this? Uh, the first winner is number 87. Uh, a, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. A Pearson. I'll put it in the down bar. But anyway, congrats. Uh, you are the winner, the first winner of the box of socks, Cal. And she knit 16 Harry Potter themed socks. All Harry Potter themed, which just totally blew my mind. So yay, congrats. And the next winner is number 140. And that was Zoe Panda. So yay, congrats Zoe Panda. She knit uh, 13 pairs, but only pictured 12 because she was wearing the 13th pair at the time of taking the photo, but still a lovely pair, a lovely box of socks nonetheless. So again, big congrats to you both. Uh, please get in touch with me on Ravelry. Uh, again, in the subject line, letting me know that you are the winners of the box of socks 2017 knit along, and I will get your prizes out to you ASAP. Oh yes, and let me know your shipping address so I know where to send your prize, but uh, yay. And again, a big, huge thank you to everybody else who participated in the knit along. I'm super excited for the Box of Socks 2018. Uh, I, again, I've created a thread in the Yarngasm Ravelry th group for the Box of Socks 2018, so you can pop on over in there and start posting your projects, your socks, some patterns that you're thinking about knitting, uh, and just whatever, have fun with it. And uh, come December 2018, I will create another FO thread for all of you to post your finished box of socks and uh, we shall do this again next year and I can't wait. I think that is it for Administrati this week. And which, by the way, Administrati is a, is a term that I <laughs> purloined from the uh, Stockinette Zombies podcast. They were the first ones to use administrati and i think it's a brilliant word so i'm adopting it into my own, <laughs> my own lingo so just to give credit where it's due but anyway i have a show for you guys uh and you know speaking of socks box of socks i didn't even bring it down bring my box of socks down to show you guys how terrible is that well if it's any consolation i did not finish my box of socks i knit seven pair I'm wearing one of those pairs right now. But um, yeah, I, I posted a photo of it on Instagram. Uh, but hopefully this year, this year will be the year that I actually complete my box of socks. Last, last year, or the year before last year, I nearly made it. Anyway, I'm rambling. But speaking of socks, I have a finished object. Yes. Dennis's spousal socks are complete. <laughs> um, and spousal socks, again, is a term that I coined from the Squirrel Pie Productions podcast. Tommy came up with this awesome term for socks that you knit for your spouse. Spousal socks. And they are done. They are done, you guys. These took me forever. Um, reasons are twofold, probably, because number one, they're not for me. Any selfish knitting takes like twice or three times longer than... And the second reason is he wanted super long cut, uh, super long legs on his socks. So reason being, I only had like two grams of yarn left over from this yarn. And the yarn, again, is Jinx Yarns and her strong sock, um, or is it her power sock? I forget, strong, but it's like, it's BFL, um, it's her BFL yarn. So I believe it's power sock. I'll put it in the down bar, but anyway, really lovely yarn. Uh, Jinx Yarns in her Eternal Sonata colorway. I might just have to get another skein of this for myself to knit something because it's such an awesome colorway. And I wouldn't, you wouldn't think that, uh, Dennis picked this yarn out himself. I told him to go stash diving and he pulled out this skein and I was like, okay, yeah, sure. I, I can totally knit you a pair of socks out of them. Um, yeah, so they are done and I'm, they're, 
on my Bryson sock blockers, metal. I will be totally honest, I'm not crazy about the Bryson sock blockers. I don't know, they're not, I don't know, anytime I put like socks on them, they never really fit completely well. I don't know, they're always kind of like wibbly wobbly on it, but uh, yeah, I don't know, they do the job. Uh, however, I will, I will mention that these are not blocked and I showed them to Dennis this morning. He was all excited that they were done, and, but then he looked at them, he goes, are they blocked? I'm like, you don't have to block socks to wear them but he requested me he requested that I block them so who knew who knew Dennis was a sock snob and needs his socks blocked but anyway if you want some blocked I will block them but yeah I finished them last night I could have blocked them but I not enough hours in the day so um here they are unblocked but yay they're done they're done they're done they're done they're done and I can cast on some socks for myself now yay I'm in rare form today guys <laughs> bear with me um so yay, spousal socks are done, 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 done. Let's move on to some whips. Uh, and again, I have been completely monogamous this week. Uh, yeah, and living in my project bag that my friend Nina sewed up for me with the narwhals and and mermaids and captains and it's just it's just so awesome and I love it. It's huge, huge for um for sweaters and. As I mentioned, I have a sweater in here, and if you were, if you tuned in last week, you might know what it is. It's the Threat Mior sweater by Isolde Teague. Haven't made a huge dent in it, but I made progress on it. Here it is. Uh, yeah, it's coming along. It's coming along. I was still, as I was knitting it, I was still debating whether I should have gone more contrasting on the colors, but you know, I like it. I really do like it. Um, it's this whole like blue, like teal, green, blue, and the white together just are so wintry and snowy and uh, this is gonna be such an awesome sweater. And again, just having a blast knitting it and I still have to knit the ribbing for the neckline. Um, yeah, so, and I'm using Chiaogu uh, US4 3.5 millimeter needles and yeah, it's, I'm magic looping it. It's still, I still don't have enough stitches on the, the needles where I can fully knit in the round. Uh, I think I have one more round of increases to go before I'm done increasing for the yoke, but I will be on the body part of just endless stockinette. <laughs> it's gonna be so fun. Um, I say that very sarcastically, but yeah, it's just gonna be one giant rectangle of stockinette in green. And then I will find myself on Sleeve Island. It's it's gonna be a special time for me, you guys. Yeah, can you tell I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, it'll just be like knitting one giant body sock. That's how I look at it. So um, yeah, anyway, uh, here's where I am with Threat Muir. Again, a really wonderful, beautiful pattern. Uh, and I have my little penguin, penguin that I got from Corner of Craft, or Ka Hannah of the Corner of Craft podcast and Crafty Chat. I believe it, she, her company, she, she's, uh, her podcast is called Crafty Chat, but she is known as the Corner of Craft all around the web. So anyway, I'm sure if you search for her either on YouTube or Instagram, she comes up as either. So anyway, but I love Hannah. She is awesome. We did a holiday swap and she spoiled me rotten and gifted me one of her really adorable penguin bead stitch markers or progress keepers. And I love this little guy. He's so fun. So that's all the whips and FOs that I have to share with you this week. Uh, I have to say, I've been pretty monogamous uh, with my Threat Muir and uh, getting Dennis's socks done. And I have to say, I did cast on another sweater, which I'm not far along in it enough to, I'm still kind of toying around with colorway options, but um, I will say that it is the Zweig pullover. Yeah, that has been cast on, but I, it's nothing to write home about yet because I'm still trying to decide on a contrasting color for that. But anyway, more on that next week. Uh, but in the meantime, I thought I would share a couple of stash acquisitions that I have acquired over the past few weeks because last week I didn't uh, have time to mention them. But uh, once upon a corgi, uh, my friend Gabby had a trunk show at Nitty City in, uh, in Manhattan in New York and I decided to hop on over there and check check it out and hang out with her. I figured I missed her trunk show at Do You Knit the weekend before and I was like, I'm not missing this trunk show. So, and it was in the city, so I really had no excuse. So I hopped over to Nitty City. We had a really awesome afternoon, just hung out. We knit together, chat, and yeah, I really needed that. I It's like anytime I can just find an afternoon where I have nothing going on, where I can just go to a yarn shop, hang out and knit, maybe buy something. 
you know, it's like I I really really do appreciate those those days. So, um, but yeah, I came I could not go to her trunk show and not come home with yarn. Who does that anyway? But I got this really awesome skein. It's her Isaac base. It's 100% Superwash Polworth fingering weight. And it's a new to me base. I've never knit, I, I don't think I've ever knit with Polworth before. I've spun with it, but I've never actually knit with it. And I just love the texture of it. And this colorway just won my heart. I was like, yeah, yeah. And it's, in case, in case you're curious, it is her Lemony Snicket colorway. And it's so cool. I love it. I love it. So these will make a really fun pair of socks. I don't know. I don't know what it wants to be yet. Maybe it doesn't want to be socks. We shall see. We shall see. But yeah, she had some really beautiful colorways there. Lots of, it was before Christmas. So uh, lots of her uh, holiday colorways and it was just so hard to choose one one skein. I was trying to budget myself because guys, Vogue Knitting Live is coming up. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be good, I'm trying to be good and hold out to do some damage at Vogue Knitting Live next weekend. So, or not this weekend, the following weekend. But um, I, yes, so very, very happy with this purchase. And I was so happy to finally go back to Nitty City. It's been a really long time. Again, I live in Brooklyn and the part of Brooklyn that I live in, it takes me about 45 minutes to an hour to get anywhere else. It's crazy. And then uh, Lara from uh, Jinx Yarns and the Dyer's Notebook and I, as we do every year, we did a holiday swap and she, sent me a skein of tartan, her new holiday color, right? Which you guys, I was drooling over it. I will be, I'll be honest. I was drooling over it because it's, it's very, it's very outlander if you ask me. Um, and yeah, it's so cool. So these are going to be my next holiday socks for this year, for 2018. Yeah. And then I also did a couple of other holiday swaps uh, with some friends. I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about swaps on the podcast just because, you know, it's between me and, you know, some of my, you know, nitty besties and everything, but there are some things that I'm just super excited about that I can't resist talking about. So, um, especially this one, uh, if you are familiar with the Wolf and Shafa podcast hosted by my wonderful friend Magdalena, um, she also has a Wolf and Shafa, she also hand dyes yarn, Wolf and Shafa yarns, um, but she... I have to say, I almost cried when I opened this because it was just so amazing. And yeah, if you guys know me and have been following the podcast, you know I am addicted to the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Mass. And this girl has my number because um, I got a little bent in transit, I think. But she sent me the best holiday card ever. You guys. Yeah. All the characters from the inner circle of a court of thorns of court of thorns and roses you guys you have Farah, you have reese you have amarin and let me see i think this is um let me see yeah that's cassian up there and then you have uh morgan uh, not morgan morgan uh or more from uh another one of the characters and then you have asriel let me see if you can get that yeah there's asriel they're decorating the tree and i love <laughs> I love Amryn's expression on her face and yeah and if you know it looks like she's getting soused on wine but no that is not wine if you, if you read the book it's it's something else but um yeah I, I really love this Magdalena this totally made my day and I, I just it's super special so thank you thank you so much uh so I guess I will move along to sewing because elephant in the room you guys I have a new dress I've, I've been on a total sewing kick these past few weeks I want to say so I'm very happy about that uh, I definitely want to get some more some more dresses in my wardrobe and I have to say I have been wearing a lot of handmade garments lately which I have to say is awesome because that is what I'm aiming for a whole handmade wardrobe full of dresses um, yeah that I actually enjoy wearing and I have to say I'm very pleased with this one. Uh, so I was watching the Fluffy Fibers podcast hosted by the lovely, amazing, and talented Isabelle, uh, who is based in France. Uh, and she did a, a short holiday episode uh, where she was wearing this beautiful uh, Jersey uh, Moneta dress by Colette. It was bright red, and uh, she just looked beautiful throughout the entire episode. And I was just like, I want to make that dress. <laughs> so it's kind of been, uh, 
on the back a dress that I've been wanting to make but it's kind of been on the back burner um, but the fact that it's made out of Jersey and it looks so comfortable I was like all right I gotta make one of those dresses so over that weekend I purchased the pattern from Colette patterns and printed it out and I want to say I had it ready to go the, the actual pattern cut out and ready to go within 45 minutes I'm gonna to be totally honest about PDF patterns. I think they're great. The fact that they make patterns super accessible uh, to pretty much everyone around the world. However, I am no fan of piecing them together. I mean, cutting out fabric is a chore in itself and then having to print out all these pieces of paper and then piecing them together and taping them and making sure they all line up and everything and then cutting them out, um, that in itself is no picnic. So, and then there's the fact that I'm, you know, printing out all this paper and I don't use all those pieces of paper. It's I, I feel like it can be a big waste of, I just can't help feel that it's a waste of paper whenever I'm doing that. But anyway, um, I guess that's what recycling's for. So, um, you know, at least you have that. I really appreciate PDF patterns that let you know, uh, which pages you will actually need, uh, depending on what your size is. So I know there are some companies that do that and then some that don't and it makes your life. This was a total breeze to print out, piece together, cut out. And I want to say that I had, uh, both the, everything from uh, printing out the pattern to having the, the fabric all cut out and ready to go to be sewed within, I want to say like an hour and 15 minutes. So that was a piece of cake. And then this dress, I want to say from start to finish took me about two hours to complete from start to finish. Um, it was very simple to construct. Uh, let me, let me show you. Um, it's just a simple Jersey uh, scoop neck dress with short sleeves there it comes with like two different versions you can make a short sleeve version and then a long sleeve ver sleeve version I opted for the short sleeve um, and I know you can do like a, a three-quarter inch sleeve as well um, but I love I love short sleeves so I went with that uh, and then it also has a gathered waistline and I will say that the gathered waistline wasn't, this was the most challenging part. First of all, gathers are never a picnic to do, in my opinion. <laughs> They're always a little fiddly and I have to rip out certain areas, but this came together very well. Um, had some, you set it in with the, um, with a strip of elastic going all the way around and that makes it, uh, the gathers a little bit more easy to install, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, it's just, there's no zipper, it's just all pullover. Uh, but I feel like the real bonus of this pattern is the pockets. They're pockets, you guys. Um, and pockets is, are the best. So yay, very, very, very happy with the way this turned out. And uh, it's it's a knee length uh, skirt. So it goes, it hits me right at the knee, which I like, perfect for winter. Um, I have to wear a slip under it so it doesn't ride up on me. And yeah, it's it's not as form fitting as the um, the lady skater dress, which is, I have to say my favorite Jersey pattern uh, by far. Uh, the, the one thing that I'm not, like while I love the way this looks, it's super comfortable. Um, I'm more used to, uh, wearing jersey with a negative ease if that makes sense or maybe it's because i'm just used to wearing the lady skater dress by uh kitschy Koo, which i talk about pretty much every single sewing segment <sighs> but anyway i love the way this turned out uh, i can definitely see myself making another one i ordered actually ordered some more fabric from fabric.com so that's hopefully coming today um but yeah otherwise the only different thing that i did i the only i don't know if it's a modification but i guess it really boiled down to laziness <laughs> but uh i the pattern says to use one of those double pronged uh sewing needles and i'm totally blanking on what they're actually called but it's a two-headed sewing needle and it creates a parallel stitch line or two parallel stitch lines um which you which are pretty common on jersey t-shirts if you're familiar um i just went with a a zigzag stitch, a single zigzag stitch, um, which by the way, if you are not familiar with sewing with jersey, um, it's important to stitch with a zigzag stitch as opposed to a straight stitch because jersey fabric stretches and you want, the zigzag stitch permits some stretch, which is important to know. So yeah, and then I want to say the neckline was a little fiddly. Um, I don't, I'm not sure why, but I don't know why I had trouble with it. Uh, it was fine, it turned out fine, but for some reason I just had a little trouble figuring the sizing or anyway, it turned out fine, I'm happy with it. Um, and the fabric that I used is, uh, it looks like jersey, it's like a heavy, medium weight jersey, but on the end it's, I think it's um, 
French, I think it's called French Terry Jersey. And it's, it doesn't have much stretch to it, uh, but it has like this kind of sweatshirty, is that how it's called? Sweatshirt <laughs> fabric on, um, texture underneath, but on the side it's uh, like this really sm smooth uh, medium weight jersey. And you guys, it's so comfortable, so comfortable. Perfect for lounging around the house and feeling fancy at the same time. Um, so yeah, that is my Moneta dress. And I think next up this weekend, I'm gonna make another lady skater dress because I have some fabric that is telling me it wants to be a lady skater dress. So that is coming down the pike. I am gonna move along to shop update because the first shop update of 2018 is happening on January 6th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So we have another, it's another international shop update. And uh, again, that means that anyone, anyone can shop it. It's just at a different, time than my normal Friday 7 p.m. Eastern time update. So uh, just to mix things up a little bit and because of the holiday, the way things worked out, I'm gonna have um, another shop update, uh, international shop update back to back. So um, I hope you guys can make it. It's uh, at, my online shop is at uh, www.volanavineyarns.com and let me go get the yarn that will be in the shop. So because January is my birthday month, uh, my birthday, in case you're curious, is on January 31st, the last day of January, but to me, it's birthday month, so yeah, no. Um, I thought it was appropriate to uh, start dyeing more goth day cake. Yay, so this will be in stock. Uh, this is a colorway I came up with last year for my birthday. And yeah, so here it is on Nouveau and here it is on Volca. I will also have this colorway and all my other colorways available on Blitzed and uh, Smitten DK. So yay. I have some more Solstice in stock, which is a new colorway I came up with um, at the end of last year. So it's really just this um, gray, like warm gray, uh, neutral with a uh, I want to say black speckles and just like lots of variation in there. So lots of subtle uh, multicolored dark speckles. And then by popular demand, I will have some Outlander back in stock. So I will have some of that. And here it is on Blitzed and here it is on Smitten DK. And also by popular demand, I will have some more Dead Calm in stock. Here's that. And I actually have to say, I think Dead Calm goes really well with Outlander. So yeah, if you were wondering what might you pair with Outlander, I think these two go really well together. So there will be that. These past few weeks, I've been doing a lot of trial and error because I realized I don't have, yeah, mauve is my obsession as far as colors go. <laughs> and so and I, I thought it was only appropriate that I come up with uh, my own in-house mauve colorway, one that I really love and would want in it with all the time. Uh, and I thought it was ridiculous that I didn't have one yet. So after much trial and error, I finally found my mauve. And here it is. I'm calling it Volenvine number nine. Um, and if you hadn't guessed, it's it's kind of a play on Love Potion number nine and Chanel number five. So <laughs> I thought this is my mauve. It's it's wonderful and makes my heart sing and I love it, I love it, I love it. So um, I will have a lot of this in stock. And uh, here it is on Blitzed and Smitten DK. And uh, in, because I was doing a lot of trial and error, you can imagine that I have quite a few skeins of mauve related colors or just a lot of, a lot of mauve, uh, random one of a kind skeins uh, that will also be available in the shop. However, because there are quite a few, I think the way I'm going to offer these on the site um, is as a mystery, uh, mystery skein. Uh, so if you love mauve, regardless of what shade, I'm going to be making a listing where you don't know which mauve skein you're gonna get, but you know it's going to be mauve <laughs> or which base, and they're all gonna be the same price. I'm gonna price them at $30 US. So it's gonna be total mystery as far as what base you're gonna get, but you know that it's going to be a mauve shade. So here's one. Well, this one I was having a little fun with. I realized at first um, I wasn't sure, and then I just added speckles and created something really fun. So there's that one of these. Uh, and then here's like a really, I've added too much dye to the dye pot. Um, so this one's quite dark. Uh, so there's that one. And then um, here's another one. And Emily, who uh, has started working for me last Monday, uh, she is, you guys, 
Emily is awesome. So as I mentioned, I hired somebody to come in once a week to help me package yarns and you know, a couple of other stuff around the office and uh, I gave her a random task. I was like, well, I have all these <laughs> one of a kind skeins if you wanna just label, if you wanna take a crack at naming them because naming colorways can be difficult. Uh, so she named a couple of skeins and this one is Butterfly Kisses which is a really nice mauve, I have to say, but yeah, definitely not what I was going for, but still a really awesome mauve nonetheless. Um, and then here, this is called Cup of Tea. There's that one. Yay. And then this one was cool. I just, I don't know. I didn't want it to be as multi-toned as it is. So that one's, and this is called Mauve is the New Black, which I think has to be the name of a future colorway. <laughs> I don't know, I really like that name. Um, so she did a really awesome job coming up with names for those. Um, but as I was saying, she uh, she's actually the host of a her own podcast called Slow Fashion Rebel. So check her out on YouTube and I hope she doesn't mind me talking about it on the podcast, but you know, anyway, she is she's great and you should definitely check her out. Um, yeah, so it was just, it was really awesome that she actually lives in the neighborhood and it, it was just like the perfect fit so very very excited to have her on board and she's yeah she's working out perfectly but anyway uh that is pretty much it except for i have these two one-of-a-kind skeins that i came up with as well i was having a little little extra fun in the dye pot this week so yeah i've, I've been a busy bee but anyway um Yay, so that is what's going to be in store. I'm also going to be ha I'm also going to be dyeing some yarn today. I'm going to have some I am no bird in the shop as well. So in case you're curious. So, okay, that said, I'm going to move along to blather, which is a segment where I chat about what's been going on in my life. Should you care to stick around? Okay, so, uh what's been going on in my life? Well, uh yesterday we had a pretty big snowstorm. Uh, I was as I like to say, it, it was snow globing out. Uh you could barely barely see through the snow it was just so like all these many little flurries and i want to say we got about we got about eight inches of snow maybe more i want to say last weekend it got so cold that our pipes froze yeah and if any of you have known what that's like uh it means you don't get any any water but um thankfully uh the, it, it only happened in our kitchen we definitely had hot water and running water in our bathrooms and showers so that was that was good, but uh, yeah, we had to figure out a solution to do our dishes. <laughs> so unfortunately, there wasn't much dishwashing getting done during the week, uh, but it did eventually come back. Our cold water came back, I want to say by Wednesday, and then the hot water came back two days later. So we're keeping the water on a slow trickle to make sure that it just keeps coming and doesn't freeze over again. But Dennis had to come down because the, the way the pipe goes, uh, my dye, dye dungeon, my dye studio is right below our kitchen. Um, so the pipe runs from our kitchen down the wall to our to the, to where the dye studio is. And when they renovated this house, whoever renovated this house did a really bad job of insulating the house so there's no insulation in in that part of the house which is which is crazy little to none i want to say but um yeah it, it was very poorly renovated and case in point the pipes rose so dennis had to come shift my equipment all around so he could face a several space heaters and a heat lamp he made like a whole contraption it's kind of crazy but like he was pointing it at the wall had it going for like the whole day and i think that definitely contributed to us getting our hot water back in the kitchen so <laughs> i could finally run the dishwasher which is good but um yeah so far knock knock on wood it's it's all it's all good so um you know uh we should hopefully fingers crossed that it doesn't get too cold this weekend we should have running water throughout the weekend. I don't know, but you know, it's a surprise really. Um, so there's that. And then uh, what else? Uh, Vogue Knitting Live is coming up, uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend. So I am super excited for that. Uh, Ellie of Skander Knits is coming to stay with me. Yay, I, I've, I've missed her so much. I know she, she was just here, I wanna say like two months ago, but yeah, I'm excited to see her again and see all of my other friends too. I mean, I know Rhinebeck just happened, but at the same time, it's like, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've seen my knitting posse and I wanna see everybody again and hang out with them. So time to make plans, time to make plans. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'm not taking any classes at Vogue Knitting Live. Honestly, I just go to those places to hang out with people, say hello to people and uh, knit and 
you know, do a little bit of yarn damage. I like doing a little bit of shopping for yarn, you know, because why not? Why not? So that is pretty much it for the episode. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please like and subscribe below if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, show notes for this episode and every other episode can be found over at www.yarngasmpodcast.com. And, you know, yeah, I will see you next week. Happy knitting. Bye. Ba -da -da -ba -da.